WUT. It's Wednesday, February 5th. Thanks for tuning in to TVC News. I'm Cody Woodside. And I'm Maggie Solomon. Breaking news from last night, three people were shot in Fort Sanders. Knoxville Police Department is investigating a shooting inside Highland Terrace Apartments on the corner of 13th Street and Highland Avenue. It occurred around 8 p.m. Responders found one male and one female with gunshot wounds. A third victim was found near the corner of 21st Street and Highland Avenue. They were taken to UT Medical Center where they are expected to recover with no problems. The shooter, however, who was described as by UT police as a black male accompanied by three other black males, is still at large and the incident is still under investigation. Students from the University of Tennessee's Student Government Association took a trip to Nashville on Monday for Governor Bill Haslam's annual State of the State Address. While there were on the Hill, the students met with various lawmakers, including Knoxville's own representative, Gloria Johnson. They discussed issues concerning the university, including the proposed change to student fees and an expansion of the Hope Scholarship from 120 hours to eight semesters. UT's Issues Committee brought political activist and author Angela Davis to the Cox Auditorium on Tuesday night. Davis spoke on slavery and the prison industrial complex. She was a leader of the American Communist Party and had close relations with the Black Panther Party in the 1960s. Vice Chair of the Issues Committee, Robin Lovett, was happy about the night's turnout. Well, one of our goals is to bring modern history to, the UT, to UT's campus. And so Angela Davis really represents this because she became such a formative person in um, the civil rights movement. But she remains relevant because she does so much activist work to this day. Two years ago, fraternity Phi Gamma Delta, also known as Fiji, was closed down following incidents with alcohol and hazing. Having been at UT since 1890, the fraternity was shut down by its national headquarters, not the university. Now Fiji is making its comeback. Phi Gamma Delta Field Secretaries Andrew Griffin and Jackson Wood are overseeing the recruitment of this brand new chapter. We want to, we want to recruit men who are going to really hold, hold themselves to a higher standard, and be a positive reflection on us, as well as be a man that is going to represent the Tennessee community um, in, a, in a positive light and be someone that the other fraternity men, the sorority women, and, and people in general are going to be proud to associate with. Jackson and Wood have been meeting with different male students on campus and will extend bids to the chapter until around the end of February. Through starting a chapter from scratch is challenging. They know the qualities they're looking for. Several years ago, uh, our chapter had kind of strayed away from a lot of the values and things that we stood for as an organization. Uh, so what we decided basically was the best course of action was to start over again. And so Jackson and I are here to re-recruit the chapter uh, and to select the best men they're going to take our organization into a positive direction. Interfraternity Council President Evan Smith said he is looking forward to Fiji's return. And now that they're coming back to campus, it really doesn't do anything but benefit the Greek system. Uh, Phi Gam is a great chapter. It always has been, uh, and I know it will. I've met the guys personally who are in charge of recruiting some of the guys over there. Uh, so I know for a fact that they'll be right back to where they were a few years ago, uh, probably even better. The Center for Leadership and Development held an interest meeting for students interested in becoming a part of Leadership. This competitive institute helps develop leadership qualities in students. Graduate student assistant Laura Cotola spoke on the Leadership's purpose. It's a lot on building community and focuses on building your vision. Um, and so each person is put into a family cluster and there's five family clusters and each one has a staff or faculty member that helps guide them through the week. And then they really work together to not only build that community, but to also help each other learn what you're passionate about. And by the end of the week, you come out with a vision of what you would hope to achieve. Former Leadership participant Diane Ruff grew a lot from her time with the Institute. Comfort zones uh, with 59 other people who you're probably not going to cross paths with otherwise, who all want to make this world a better and more just place. Applications can be found at leadershipandservice.utk.edu and are due by February 12th. Hundreds of students are warming up their voices and practicing their dance moves. It's all sing time in Tennessee. All campus hosted some form of all sing almost every year since 1932. Various campus organizations have been rehearsing song routines since last semester, hoping to win based on skills of musicality and performance. Some performance themes this year include Wicked, Mary Poppins, Hits of the Decades, and more. Alpha Delta Pi All Sing Director Madeline Pierce and Kappa Sigma Director Robert Wrinkle have been leading their organizations as a team. What are we, four, the the four or five rehearsals from being on stage. And so, we have a lot to do. So we're working on so. the... Polishing up, finishing touches, mostly. Choreo, 
putting the music, ev putting everything together that we have, like some of the elements for it and putting it together. But they agree that when all their notes come together, it's worth the hard work. You're learning the music and everyone's, you're in that first stage where nobody really knows it and everybody's just learning it. And then when you finally get that first harmony and people are like, whoa, music, like that's incredible. And so from then, like that was a big moment for me that I, was, I thought was really exciting. But I think overall just having everybody here from all over and then coming together just to sing like these songs, it's, it's been a great, great opportunity. All Sing is this Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. in Alumni Memorial's Cox Auditorium. Tickets are $10 for students and can be purchased in the UC or at KnoxvilleTickets.com. Hurry, they're selling out quickly. One other campus organization is preparing for a different performance this weekend. TVC's Kelsey Kenny has more. You could say they're pitch perfect. UT's female a cappella group Revolution has a big weekend ahead of them. They'll be competing in the quarterfinals of the International Championship of Collegiate a cappella. It's the group's second year in a row to make an appearance. Last year they advanced to the semifinals. Revolution leader Jenny Darden said they're working extra hard this year to be competitive again. Uh, we just want to make sure that our set is really strong, that we're totally prepared, and we're all getting really excited for the chance to perform and compete together. Revolution is up against eight other groups in the Southern Division this Saturday, including a cappella groups from Belmont University, Vanderbilt, Central Florida, and others. They need to take first or second place to advance. Putting in the extra practice is not always easy for a student group, but member Madeline Pierce noted that the girls make it work. We've just upped our rehearsal time and we'll probably be, probably be coming early on Saturday and just any time that we can get together and all of our girls are so busy involved with shows and everything, so it's just whatever time we can get to keep working on it because we can always improve, um, but hopefully we'll be ready. Because the result is Aka awesome. It's awesome when you have one person and an instrument or a band, but when you get like 12 voices together and you don't have any instruments and it sounds almost as good as the radio, it's just such a cool phenomenon as it's becoming. Freshman member Camille Winton expressed a similar feeling. It's such an honor, like I feel so honored to be in such an incredible group of people, like every single one of these girls is absolutely amazing and we all just make wonderful, wonderful music together and I absolutely love it. On top of that, a victory this weekend would just be music to their ears. For TVC News, I'm Kelsey Kenny. That looks like so much fun. Yeah, I'm always a fan of the synchronized lady dancing <laughs> from, from Pitch Perfect. Ah, if I had that kind of talent, I would be so excited. But right now, we're going to toss it over to Katherine Donnelly with sports. Thanks, guys. This past week, the athletic department made headlines when they finalized plans of switching athletic apparel from Adidas to Nike. The deal with Nike covers the entire department, so both men and women's teams will wear the new logo. The change does not take effect for quite some time, though, because UT is required to finish out their current contract with Adidas until it expires in June 2015. UT was highly represented in the Super Bowl this past weekend with five former Vols competing, the most of any college in the country. The players included Robert Ayers, Malik Jackson, Britton Colquitt, Tony McDaniel, and the most popular UT alum, Peyton Manning. The Seahawks dominated the game with their defensive performance, forcing several turnovers from the Broncos and holding record-holding Manning to a single touchdown. The final score was 43-8. Seattle Seahawks linebacker Malcolm Smith was voted MVP of the game. In other Vol-related rela news, the basketball teams face important conference games within the next couple of weeks. The Lady Vols play their next game Friday at Old Miss and then come back home to Knoxville to take on the ranked Vanderbilt Commodores. The men's team play Vanderbilt tomorrow and follow up with two home games against SEC rivals South Carolina and Florida next week. That does it for me at the sports desk. Cody and Maggie. 
Thanks, Catherine. Coming up after the break, we've got All Campus Events Executive Member Rebecca Rummage here in the studio to give us the inside scoop on All Sing. Plus, your weekly campus calendar update. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, Vols. Uh, I'm sitting down with people that are involved with All Sing. So, uh, welcome, Carrie and Rebecca, to the set. How are you guys doing today? Really Pretty good. Well. All right. So, tell us a little bit about All Sing. What What is that for people that don't know? All Sing is essentially a show choir activity. We ha this is the 82nd All Sing for UT, and we have 21 different organizations competing in 12 different teams. So they're going to come, and they've been practicing for months on end, and they will display their talent at Friday and Saturday's performances. All right, so just a question that I always ask about All Sing, because I just I get it confused with lip sync a lot, but they actually sing, right? They actually sing. All right, so how long do they practice for this if they're actually singing? Very long time. For Very long time. Long time. <laughs> Three, four months, just depends on the group. They've put lots and lots of hours into this. All right, are you guys participating or what, what's your role in All Sing this year? No, we are behind the scenes primarily. I'm doing a lot of the paperwork, getting everything organized, communicating with the groups about where they need to be and all of that. Rebecca? I do all of the PR, so I'm always on Twitter, or Facebook, and all the really shiny posters that are up around campus are all my doing. So. Okay, great. So how do people win All Sing? Like, what, what does it take to win? How do they win? We have five different judges from around the community. So ACE does not judge. We have a third party do that, and they base them basically on their musical talent, their performance, cohesive as a group, adherence to their own theme, those kind of things, and they rank them, and then we can, then they all the scores get tabulated, and that's how they win. We also have um, the top female and male soloist award. Okay, and how does winning All Sing contribute to winning the ACE Cup? It's a certain port, uh, point allotment towards the cup, and it's a pretty hefty one as it is a major event. All right. Each event that ACE puts on contributes to the ACE Cup, so it's all portioned to where um, you get a point system from Homecoming, Ball Vengeance, um, All Sing, and Carnicus. Okay, uh, and I know it's two nights. Why is it two nights? The more the merrier, just so we can get a lot of people in. Tickets are selling out really quickly, and we have two seats in the whole Cox Auditorium, so two nights just so we can get people in. Plus, it gives them more time to showcase their talent as they have been practicing for so long. All right, uh, and again, how can people get their tickets? You can get tickets um, at the UC ticket office. You can also get them at the door. They're $10 for UT students. You have to have your student ID. Um, general pu public is $15. Um, you can get those also at the door and the UT ticket office. You can get more information at ASUTK Facebook or you can go to activities.utk.edu to um, get more CPC and ACE information. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for joining us today. Again, that's happening Friday and Saturday in the UC. So we'll be right back after this brief commercial break. Well, there's a lot happening on campus throughout the rest of the week. Thursday night at 8 p.m. in the Shiloh Room, the SGA Election Commission is hosting a mandatory meeting for all students running for an executive position in the 2014 election. Election Commission will review all rules and procedures for candidates and their executive campaign members. And as we mentioned earlier, you can catch All Sing this weekend in AMB's Cox Auditorium, Friday and Saturday. Tickets are available online and in the UC. And now we're going to toss it over to Taylor G Gilmore, Taylor Gilmore, with our weekend forecast. Thanks, guys. We haven't had a pretty week. We've had clouds, rains, pretty much the same thing we've all been like seeing outside. And you can expect the rest of the week to be pretty much the same. On Thursday, we have a low of 25 with a high of 39. And on Friday, our low is looking at about 34 with a high of 48. Heading to our weekend forecast, uh, Saturday's looking about the same as Friday. And on Sunday, expect a lot of rain, so be sure to bring your umbrellas outside with you. We're expecting a chilly low of 21 with a high of 48, so don't forget those coats as well. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Taylor, for that. Uh, are you excited about all that rain, Maggie? All that rain. I'm glad that uh, she let me know because I have a tendency to not check the weather, and I tend to get rained on a lot. I'll probably still be caught without my umbrella. Hopefully our parade won't get rained on. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for tuning in today. We'll have another show for you guys next week, so have a great rest of your week. See you guys.